Meditation on the Larger Catechism looks at question number 185, which reads as follows. How are we to pray? The answer is we are to pray with an awful apprehension of the majesty of God and deep sense of our own unworthiness, necessities, and sins, with penitent, thankful, and enlarged hearts, with understanding, faith, sincerity, fervency, love, and perseverance, waiting upon Him with humble submission to His will. Well, we've considered who we are to pray to and what we ought to be praying for. Now we consider the attitude which ought to motivate our prayers. What is it that uh, couches our prayers in the proper tone so that God will hear and answer our prayers uh, in, a, in a gracious way? Well, the Catechism answers by beginning with an awful apprehension of the majesty of God. That's a bit of a mouthful. Awful is this uh, word not, as we use it today, a terrible thing, but a reverence, a great reverence for God. And this word apprehension is a reverent understanding, a reverent grasp intellectually, uh, theologically, if you will, uh, of the majesty of God. When we approach God in prayer, we come into the presence of God. He is the transcendent creator of all things. He is above us. He is eternal, infinite, and unchangeable. And so we enter into the presence of God, the one who made us, who governs our lives, and has control over every breath that we breathe. We should enter into that presence with a sense of reverence, a sense of the majesty and the greatness of God. He is far above us. Far beyond our comprehension of Him. Far beyond our understanding. And so we should come before Him with a sense of reverence at His great majesty, glory. When you contemplate the presence of God, you see God in the glory of His heavenly city. You see Him surrounded with the elders, as the scriptures have uh, explained to us, with the angel, angelic hosts surrounding Him, with the cherubim, the seraphim crying out, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. This is the one that we approach in prayer. And at His right hand is our Savior, Jesus Christ, who rules over all, who is Lord of lords and King of kings. What reverence, what awe should overwhelm us when we approach the presence of this mighty, majestic God. Along with a view of God's glory and majesty, there will be a deep sense of our own unworthiness. What right or what claim do we have on this God to assist us or to minister to our needs? We utterly depend upon Him for everything. And in fact, because of our sin, we are not worthy of any blessing in our lives, but rather deserve judgment, wrath, condemnation. And so as we approach this God, we must come with a deep sense of our own unworthiness. We stand in the presence of God by grace, not by works, by what Christ has done for us, and not what we have done for Christ. So we will be overwhelmed with a deep sense of our own unworthiness. We don't deserve answers to our prayers because of good things that we have done, or the way we conducted ourselves, or kept ourselves from other things. God blesses us according to His grace, not according to our merit. We should have a deep sense as well of our necessities. Everything that we have in life comes to us by the mercies and grace of God. Every breath we breathe, the food that we enjoy at our tables each evening, the sleep that we have through the night, all comes to us by the grace of God. And these necessities for life Remind us that we are utterly dependent upon God for everything in life. He knows the number of hairs in our head, diminishing as they may be. He knows uh, the length of our lives, short or long. God has all things under, our, under His control. 
And so we come with a sense of our necessities. We need to have God help us. And we cannot provide for ourselves on our own resources or strength, by our own strength. A deep sense of our own sins. Uh, we are unworthy by virtue of uh, really being creatures of God. We are utterly dependent upon Him as creatures. But further, as sinners, we are especially unworthy of any benefit from God. And so therefore, we should approach Him with penitent hearts. That is, hearts that uh, are continually repenting over sins. The sins that continually infect our lives and, and overwhelm us, sometimes trip us up. We must continually be repenting. So penitence is this idea of turning from sin and looking to God for forgiveness and grace. We should come with thankful hearts, thanking Him for the blessings that He has richly bestowed on us in life. All the many things you've enjoyed in life have come from God's mercies towards you, and so therefore, be thankful. God loves a thankful heart, and we should give thanks always to Him. Our hearts should be enlarged. What does that mean? Well, you know, sometimes athletes, when they... Uh, extend themselves in, in racing, uh, running especially, they get enlarged hearts, that is powerful, strong hearts that are effective in helping them run long distances. The heart of the Christian should be enlarged with thinking, with uh, grand thoughts of God, great visions for, for what God can do, great encouragement for what God will accomplish through us if we yield our lives to Him. Our hearts need to be enlarged by faith. And not small in unbelief, not small in doubting, not small in being discouraged. Allow your heart to be enlarged by the promises of God, by the descriptions of His Word, by the encouragements of the Spirit's presence in your life. Have great vision for what God might accomplish through you, through your church, through your community, through your country. Have an enlarged heart. And so a vision, a great vision for what God might do for you. Approach Him with understanding. We do not simply enter into an emotional experience with God or a kind of a, a, a mystical experience of the other, but we approach God with our understanding. We know what we are praying for, we know what uh, we are asking for, and so there should be a great understanding in prayer, we're not among those who simply lose themselves in ecstatic experiences, whether through tongues or some other form, a visionary experience or what have you, we come before God with minds that have been renewed and understand the glory of God, the promises of God, the will of God, and how we should pray accordingly. Pray in faith, trusting in His provision. Pray with sincerity, looking for the glory of God, the good of God's people, and your own growth and grace. Pray with fervency. There should be a passion about your prayers. Not just when you're in the foxhole, although perhaps we might say almost every day is a day in the foxhole. Uh, we always need the presence of God and His help. Sometimes we forget that. But there should be a fervency, a passion to our prayers. And so allow your emotions to get caught up in the presence of God and in the needs that you have. Pray with fervency, not uh, weakly. Pray with love, love for God, and so desire to see His glory exalted, love for your brethren, that they would be strong in faith, uh, love for God's kingdom, that it would advance around the world. Persevere in prayer. Don't give up. That's the great challenge of faith. Continuing to pray when you don't have an answer right away. Pray and pray and pray. Weeks, months, years. For God's blessings on your family, your loved ones, your church, your community, your country as well. Persevere. When you give up praying, that's sometimes hard to determine. Maybe the Spirit of God will impress it upon you that it's time to give up. It's time to let this go. God's answer is secure. It is no in this circumstance. And you need to be willing to receive that. So we wait upon God, this is a part of faith, we wait on Him for His answers. We watch for His answers and observe them when they come. Sometimes God answers our prayers and we don't realize it. We're not paying 
any attention. We forget that we prayed about this. We forget that we've laid this before God. And when it happens, we just assume that this was about to take place. Wait upon the Lord in prayer. Pray in faith and look for His answers in time. And finally, pray with a humble submission to His will. Isn't that the hardest part? That's kind of the grand climax of the answer here. Humble submission to His will. We pray to the majestic God, who is sovereign over all, who rules the world with wisdom and grace. And so therefore, when we make our petitions before Him, we do so with a humble submission to His will. Not my will, but thy will be done. So are there things in your life that you long for? Uh, things that you are concerned about for your family, for yourself, for your church, and you don't seem to see them coming about. Sometimes we need to give them up to the Lord and acknowledge His will and humbly submit to Him. If He is unwilling to grant us those things, then we just rest in His kind provision for us each day. This is the attitude of faith. It's the attitude of prayer. And it's the prayer that God 